Um, Louise called me up uh, about a half hour ago. She's uh, she's you know running some errands right now, and and uh, I was getting ready to go on the air, and she said, you know, she had heard uh, Jim Jordan, and um, in one of these other bozos, uh, repeatedly interrupting Pramila Jayapal. And, you know, Pramila Jayapal has been on this program a number of times. In fact, she's taken your calls. She is the co-chair, along with Mark Pocan of the Cong Congressional Progressive Caucus. And she said, and, and what Louise said to me is, I am so sick of hearing men shout down women. I've been hearing it all my life. It's happened to me many, many times. I am sick of it. And she said, I, I, I wonder if, you're, if, you're, if the women who are listening to your program are as sick of this as I am, if this strategy that the Republicans are employing is backfiring, and if the men who are listening to your program are starting to notice this. I mean, I, I remember 20 years ago or so, the first really good studies coming out, uh, you know, where they, they went into like corporate meetings and secretly recorded, or I guess with consent, whatever, recorded just basic meetings and what they found were that men interrupted women two or three times more frequently than women interrupted men, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You know, for example, this is, this is from uh, this morning's hearings. And this is Pramila Jayapal. She's, she's going through the list of crimes that Trump, you know, committed, basically. And it's in the context of her asking the Republicans or, or you know, rhetorically asking them, will any of you guys say that in the future it's okay for a president to, to uh, condition U.S. foreign aid on somebody in another country doing a political favor for him. And of course, none of the Republicans answered that. But instead, they just tried to shut her down over and over and over again. Here it is. Listen to this. This is Pramila Jayapal, uh, the, uh, the Democratic representative from Washington and the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Stayed in 2018. And then suddenly he became concerned in 2019. She's talking about right Trump. Right after Vice President Biden announced that he was going to run. So if your argument is that he was so concerned about Ukraine that he released aid in 2017 and 2018, then why in 2019, after the Department of Defense cleared Ukraine on charges of corruption, why then did he decide he was so concerned about corruption that he was not going to release aid? Because that that do, makes I'm sorry I'm not do. yielding gotta, I am not yielding This is Jim Jordan yielding. Gymnasium Jordan They got a new president that's why Madam lady as the time the committee will be in order and people will not interrupt They got a new president who is was not proper here Thank you Madam Mr. Lady Chairman will continue. They got a new president who was known to be an anti-corruption fighter. Exactly. So that argument exactly. has no weight whatsoever. That's now if you want to argue that the and then he, he interrupts her again. So concerned about uh, corruption at that particular moment, you have to look at the whole record of U.S. policy. So anyhow, I, I don't. Yeah, if I, if I play the whole thing. It, it, it happens repeatedly, and Matt Getz and and Jim. Most mostly it's Jim Jordan who's just you know playing the 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 punk, you know, the the the, the high school bully in this thing, and. I'm frankly disgusted by it. I mean, just the, 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 the and, and I don't know, maybe it's, it, it, it's, a, it's possible, I suppose, that Republicans, probably, you know, largely white men, because that seems to be the core of the Republican Party these days, are okay with this kind of behavior. But uh, Civics, C-I-V-I-Q-S, which is a, uh, a well-respected polling company, was hired by Daily Co's to uh, do a, an analysis, this was December 7th through the 11th, uh, they interviewed 1,411 registered voters, which is a large enough sample, this is nationwide, large enough sample that you can infer that the numbers are you know, reasonably accurate. And what they found, first of all, was that Donald Trump would lose, in the 20, if the 2020 election was held today, Donald Trump would lose to a generic Democrat, to any Democrat, whether it's Bernie Sanders or, or Joe Biden. Pete Buttigieg or, or uh, I mean, you know, pick anybody, right? Cory Booker, any of, you know, Marianne Williamson. Donald Trump would lose to any Democrat by roughly a range of 50 to 44 percent. But the other stuff that they found that I thought was really interesting, and you could read this over at dailycoast.com, was that 
of 54 percent, the majority of Americans think that things have gotten worse for the country over the past year. 54 percent of Americans also disapprove of Donald Trump's job performance as president. Only 30 percent of Americans express unwavering support of Trump. I would say that that's the cohort. That's what, what that is identifying is the listening and viewing audience for Fox News and right wing hate radio. While 48 percent oppose Trump no matter what, and I don't know if those, you know, those are people who are listening to my program or <laughs> they're just watching the news and reading the newspaper. I think it's probably the latter. And uh, only 44 percent of Americans want Trump reelected, but 53 percent of Americans expect Trump to win reelection, which is all very strange. But get this, 54 percent of Americans say that things have gotten worse. Um, Brookings just published a, a new study. This, this came out this last week, Brookings Institution. And it says that 44% of all Americans, it's almost half of all Americans uh, who are working, the U.S. workforce, 44% of all Americans have a job with median earnings of $18,000 a year, which is tough to live on. Now, all the, you know, the corporate media is telling us the economy is booming. Look at that. The stock market is up. Well, you know, most of the stock in the United States is owned by the top 10% of Americans. I mean, like the vast majority. I don't recall the exact number, but I believe it's well over 80%. That's, that's owned by individuals. There's a little bit scattered around among working class people in 401ks and things, but the vast majority of it is owned by the top 5 or 10%. And this is not just a hangover from the 2008 meltdown. This, is, this has, in fact, 63% uh, of all jobs. This is from Brookings. Quote, we discovered that 63% of all jobs that were created since 1990 were low-wage jobs. So 63, two-thirds of all, basically, roughly, two-thirds of all jobs that have been created since 1990. See, what, what's consequential about 1990? 1990 is the year... It was the middle of the George Herbert Walker Bush presidency. It was, it was exactly one decade after Reagan introduced Reaganomics and rejected Keynesian economics, FDR economics, LBJ economics, John Kennedy economics, Dwight Eisenhower economics, rejected all that and said, no, we're going to go to low taxes and, and we're going to stop investing in our infrastructure, in our country, in our students, in our hospitals. We're going to stop all that. Brookings also noted that education isn't the answer. Well, you know, we've got a crisis in education. You've got a trillion and a half dollars in student debt that is just crushing an entire generation of people. This is, again, from the Brookings report, quote, there simply are not enough jobs paying decent wages for people without college degrees who make up the majority of the labor force who escape low-wage work. 14% have a bachelor's degree. 14% of these people making $18,000 a year. An additional 8% have an associate degree. And what's the Republicans' response? To shout down women. To, to, to grandstand, to, to preen for the cameras. Louis Gohmert last night uh, revealed the name of the whistleblower, or what he believes to be the name of the whistleblower. And when Politico looked him up and said, hey, you know, this, you're, you're putting this guy's life at, at risk. Donald Trump has called for this man to be killed. And Louis Gohmert says, oh, you need to do your homework, whatever the hell that means. I mean, this is their response. 